Hello and welcome to our next video on control engineering. This time we are going to talk about how to solve a differential equation for, I don't know how to say, lazy, but let's with a detour. And this detour is called Laplace transformation. First, I'm not going to tell how this Laplace transformation is really going, it's really working. Yeah? I only know, I only will tell you the effects, because the Laplace transformation is also not that simple. Okay? The Laplace transformation, so if I have a function, there is a function in time. If there's a function in time, then I will make the Laplace transformation and the right just shuts L. This means this is Laplace transformed, and this Laplace transformation will end up into a function, and this function is no longer a function of t, it's a function of S. So we have transferred, the Laplace transformation is transferring a function in time to a function in S. And this S yeah, is a complex variable with a real and an imaginary part. Okay. This is so called, this is the time area. And this is the picture Laplace area. So we're transferring this time function into a picture function, the Laplace function. This is the Laplace transformation doing. So there are several, there's a definition of this Laplace, it's integral, blah 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 blah. Yeah. If we have a function time given, we can transfer it into a function S. Yes. This does not sound too spe spectacular at all. Yeah. However, now we are going to talk about some, some properties of this Laplace transformation. Yeah. So, one property is called linearity. Linearity. What does linearity mean? This means the Laplace transformation of two functions a multiplied by f plus b multiplied by g. This linearity is also given in the picture area. A multiplied by f plus b multiplied by g plus. So if there is a sum of functions, it's simply a sum of functions here also. And also linear coefficients will stay linear linear coefficients. Yeah? Linearity. One thing of the Laplace transformation. Very important thing of the Laplace transformation is the derivation rule. Derivation rule. What does this derivation rule say? Yeah. If we do have a Laplace transformed yeah, of the nth derivation Then this means this is S okay. and now it's a little get a little bit tricky. This means this is S n minus one 
f at the zero, yeah, at the time zero, yeah, minus s n minus two. Okay, so here we do see the beginning. Yeah, this is always f by zero, f at the position zero. Okay. This makes this derivation rule a little bit complicated. But if we say, if we say, our function in time at the position zero will be zero and will not change will not change at this position. So this, the function itself is zero and all derivations are zero at the point zero. Yeah? Then this whole stuff here suddenly is zero. Yeah? And then the derivation rule folds down to the simple part, the nth derivation of a function in time, time area, is a multiplication with s raised by the power of n in picture area. Yeah. This, however, is only valid if the function at the beginning is zero. The function and all its derivation at the beginning is zero. Then this is the derivation rule. And we will say this is the case for us. Okay. But we have to keep this in mind a little bit. Derivation rule. Okay. Where's a derivation? There is also integration. Okay. Integration rule. Integration rule. The Laplace transform of integral of a function is 1 divided by s. It's pretty much, it's pretty much the opposite. Yeah? Because if this one, the derivation, if I do it on the first, on the first derivation, it's a multiplication bias. Okay. And here, one integration is a division bias. Then there are other things. Hmm. I will explain them, but these are the most important right now. Okay. These are the most important things right now. We will use this afterwards as our common differential equation. However, I will mention now also the tamping rule. The Laplace transform of a function which is damped over time yeah, is in the picture a shift by exactly this damping factor. Okay. So if in the picture area a function is shifted yeah, then in, in time area this is damped. Then I do also have a time shift rule This is the same, but vice versa. So if we have a Laplace transform of a function which is shifted in time, then it's damped. In the picture area. Okay. Also interesting thing. Next thing is the initial value theorem
What does this mean? This means if we want to know the value of the function in time yeah, at the point zero plus, so at the point zero and a little, little tiny bit afterwards, not at zero, but a little bit tiny afterwards, yeah, it's the same as we let go s to unlimited, s multiplied by s to an a. These two things are the same. So if you want to know where we start in time, I have in the picture area, I just have to multiply by s and let s go to unlimited. Initial value theorem. And there is also the end value theorem. If we want where we end up in time, somewhere in the distant future, then it's the same. Like this. S multiplied by fs in picture and let s go to zero. Then we know where we want to, where we are going in time. That's the properties. That's very interesting properties of this Laplace transformation. Like I said, we don't know how this Laplace transformation is really working, but we can make use of these properties. And we will do this now. Okay? We will do this now, make use of the properties. Let's remember our differential equation. Okay. Let's remember this differential equation and let's have a look where we can use it. Yeah. So there is derivation, derivation rule, derivation, derivation rule, integration, integration rule, uh, derivation, derivation rule. Ah, okay. Let's let's apply this. Yeah. Let's apply this and see what is the result. Okay, so this equation, this equation I now want to transfer into the Laplace picture area. Derivation rule. Derivation rule. X for I, T and derivation yeah, is s raised by the power of n and x over s yeah, plus two, 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 two. d2 squared linearity yeah, s squared multiplied by x over s yeah, plus d1 s x over s plus x over s. You see? The nth derivation will be transferred into s raised by the power of n and x o. Derivation rule. This one. Now what we've got here? Here we've got the integration rule. Integration rule. And this is F2 always dividing bias. Yeah? Here linearity rule and here we again have derivation rules. Okay, here again we have derivation rules, R1, Okay, 
doesn't look too bad. What I can do now, yeah, and what is the interesting part, and now these are always the same factor. I can put them out. Yeah? So I can write XO for S yeah? multiplied. And now big bracket, big bracket. Already wrong. <laughs> and here I can do the same. I can get out xi. Big bracket. Okay. Now I can even do the following XO. The output is the input. And now I have above something, so it's F2 divided by square plus F1 S plus R0 plus R1 multiplied by S plus R2S squared plus Rn Sn divided, this is this stuff here, yeah, divided by this. Yeah. So this is 1 plus ST1 plus S squared T2 squared plus S hoch N And this is nothing more than the input multiplied by a function. Yeah. This here is the so-called transfer function G for us. Okay. Suddenly, yeah, because of the Laplace transformation, this complicated differential equation is transformed into just an algebraic equation with just s and some some powers of s okay this here is called transfer function übertragungsfunktion this is the transfer function yeah, describing how the input is transferred into the output. Okay. So, coming back to this here, here we do have the transfer function g of s. So, what we do have, what we do have, There's a G for S, there's an output, and there's an input. How can we calculate it now? We do usually have some input in time. Yeah? This we're going to Laplace transform, then we're getting this input in S. Yeah? Once we have this input in S, we multiply it with the transfer function, we get this output in S, and this output in S, we do the inverse Laplace transformation, and we get the output in T. Easy, right? We do not have to solve the differential equation. We solve it in the picture area. Yeah? We make one Laplace transformation 
for the input function we solve it in the picture area just by calculating, standard calculating, nothing with derivation and so on, blah blah blah. And then we do inverse Laplace transformation, boom, we get the time, the output in time. This is the theory. In reality, this inverse Laplace transformation is also not that easy. Yeah? However, it's easier than solving a differential equation. You also need to have some practice here to do this inverse uh, Laplace transformation. It can also get quite tricky. A good thing is that control engineers also thought, hey, this, this is quite tricky. Yeah. Maybe I can find somehow a solution for this issue. I don't want to do tricky things. And they really managed that just by looking at this transfer function and thinking about this transfer function and the factors and so on, what this f and this r and the t is, what does this mean? for stability and so on, that it is enough for us to read out important information just from this transfer function. This is possible. So we are looking at the transfer function and know how the thing might behave or will behave. And this is this interesting thing at the Laplace transformation that we just have to do to, 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 to calculate or just have to look in the picture area, so with this S stuff, yeah, and we stay in this S stuff. The important thing is that we know this S is not anything, yeah, it is something which is derived from the time by the Laplace transformation. But if I do not want to do the Laplace transformation, yeah, because this can get quite tricky, for stability reasons and so on, it's enough to look at this transfer function and I can read something out of it. And this is actually what we try to do yeah, with our control engineering. We want to make some statements about stability, uh, about necessary gains and so on. And there is enough to calculate with transfer functions. So now we know what a transfer function is. Next time we're going to we are going to calculate a little bit with transfer functions. Yeah? We see what these transfer functions important also, that this is a non-reactive transfer function. The output has no influence on the input. Yeah? Always keep this in mind. Yeah? So we are going to calculate with these non-reactive transfer functions next time and see if two are next to each other and two are in series to a parallel and so on, what we need to do to calculate a total transfer function. But this is then next video. This video, important thing is, what is a transfer function? So, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.